Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Well, it's a good sunny day for us. And it's just a balmy 50 degrees t-shirt weather. And that's a good thing. Man, I can see the sun. I know it. I know where it is. That's rare. I'd like to share with you some things that I've learned. Now, I've, as I've said before, my ultimate plan is to put this engine on a chipper that we're building and take this engine and mount a Lee Snivel 130 amp 24, 28 volt military alternator. Um, that's the plan. But there's some things that I've learned. It won't do me any good to take the Lee Snivel alternator and crank it up to 30 volts. That isn't going to accomplish what we need to do. So let me explain. It's the issue of modern alternators. They figured out that the best thing to do is put what's called a battery voltage sense wire. And this is what I've learned, and I agree with running an alternator with a sense wire. Now, if I have a standalone alternator like that one, that has an internal voltage regulator, what it's going to do is it's going to start pushing power to your batteries. And your battery cables and your system's run relay and junction, you're pushing current to your batteries through that system. And if you have a standalone alternator where the voltage sense wire is on the current going out of that cable, so it's reading from the voltage regulator right to its output terminal. That's as far as it can see. Well, with the resistance of all the cables that go to your, finally get to your batteries, there's a voltage differential. Now, notice with this one, it's, they read pretty close, 29.4, and actual battery voltage is here. And when I'm pushing 40 amps, there's a 2 volt differential. So since there's a 2 volt differential, because of the resistance of pushing that much current of these cables, the alternator thinks we've achieved the correct voltage. So even if I get an alternator that has an internal voltage regulator set at 30 volts, which that Lee Snaville is capable of, at 30 volts it's still only going to be 28 volts upstairs. So what I need to do is run a, a sense wire. And that's what I've done for this meter right here. And this cable right here is a sense wire and it's telling me what the batteries actually are. Not what it is at this end, but what it is at the other end. So all I have to do is connect that sense wire to the sense wire on an alternator that has an internal voltage regulator that's capable of reading the sense, the sensing the voltage on the battery bank. And I agree with that. And what we're going to find out is by that extra 2 volts, which is a 2 volt drop, because of the current, the resistance going into the cables, you're really going to be working this alternator hard. So I need at least 130 amp commercial rated um, alternator. So the one that I picked out uh, is capable at of 80% of its power output at 3000 RPM. So you don't have to turn it very fast. It's pretty pretty powerful alternator. Uh, and that's a good thing because it's going to be working very hard. I'm never going to be pushing more than 60 amps. 60 amps is all I need. If I run a C10 charge rate, that would have me at 84 amps. So it's smaller than the solar system, but I'll be able to actually finish the battery charge with an alternator from down here. So when I hack this thing and pull the generator head off, the alternator head off of there and put that Lee Snaville in there, what I have to do is figure out whether I can get a voltage regulator that has a remote sense terminal. And if I can't, I'm going to abandon that and I'm going to go with the large Ford alternator uh, and get a 24 volt regulator for it because they have a remote sense. Lee Snaville probably does, but the one that I saw uh, that's on my watch list, I don't think that it does. I think it's only capable of reading its own 
um, positive side post going out to the battery. That's as, as far away as it can read. So that won't do me any good because it won't compensate for the, the voltage drop. And here again, the reason for a voltage sense wire, you can see that these two, this meter right here, is reading this terminal. This one is reading the battle, the, the batteries, and when I'm pushing current, there is much as 2.5 volts different. Even though I'm running uh, number one cables going up there, and it's only 30 feet long, when you start pushing, the more current you push, the more voltage drop that you're going to have, and that's their purpose for having a remote sense wire on your alternator. Hope that helps somebody. Um, this has taken me a couple of years of playing around, you know, just out of pocket when I have a few spare pennies to put together to experiment with this stuff. To me, that's what homesteading is all about. In fact, I'm going to be making a video on what homesteading means to me. Oops, I forgot my coffee. That's dumb. And when you do it yourself, out of pocket, I mean, hey, anybody can go to the bank and get a loan and hire professionals to do what they need to do. But that's not what homesteading is. To me, homesteading is doing it yourself with what you have out of pocket. And homesteading, home insteading, home instead of somewhere else. Trying to make it work for you and as make as much as of your of your living as you can at home. And uh, I'll make a video on that at some other point. Uh, going through what classic homesteading used to mean and what modern homesteading means to me. It's quite a topic. Anyway, have a very blessed day. I sure am.